it's under Nana now. Okay. All right. So welcome to uh, our non-trivial trivia night. This is our Black History uh, event. And as always, uh, we want to thank uh, Black History Manitoba uh, for sharing their, their Zoom with us. And it's been really uh, great to work with you folks over, over, over the last year. It's uh, just been wonderful. So um, just about Black History Month, I'll just put this up on the screen. Uh, there's a lot of uh, st lots of things going on this month. Uh, Rhonda, do you, do you want to talk about this? Or? Um, I guess I could. If, am I? Um, I yeah, you're to, unmuted. Go, go. go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, it's always great to join you guys on uh, your non-trivial trivia night. And um, this month we do have a lot of events coming up. We are three or four down and we've got probably about six six or seven left to go. It's been a busy month for us, um, but this year we have had to go virtual. So usually we'd be able to be in a communal space together, but um, we're having to join in mediums such as this. So um, this coming week, we have our virtual event with um, starring the, the Porter. The Porter production was done here in Winnipeg, Manitoba back in the summer, and it is a great production. We're very proud of it. It is um, black led and um, it's featuring a lot of talent from Winnipeg, Manitoba and all across Canada. And it's international actually. Um, one of the lead actors is the UK. So we're very excited to work with CBC on um, having a virtual preview of it on Thursday, February 17th, and um, it'll be released worldwide as their actual premiere on the 21st. So those that come into our virtual event will get a sneak peek. Um, it's probably gonna be showing most, if not all of uh, episode one, and it should be very exciting. And then um, that weekend we have our um, field trip with the Manitoba Museum. So that'll be a virtual field trip and you'll get to learn more about Black history here in Manitoba and in Canada. And then on the holiday Monday, which is Louis Real Day, we have our history lesson and that will be virtual as well. So all the information can be found on our website, bhmwinnipeg.com. Yeah, and you should see it on your screens there because I've got it up, got it up mm -hmm. there. So. Yes, I um, <laughs> I'm excited about this thing on the 17th. Uh, so the cast conversation is actually a preview of the show as well. Yes, they're gonna they're gonna show some snippets, some behind the scenes footage, okay. and um, they'll have a couple of the individuals that were part of the production um, yeah. be there as well. So I mean, it should be a, a really good time. It'll be insightful because we'll get to hear from some of the people that were involved in mm -hmm. how different it was to be a part of this production as opposed to others that have come through, and um, just to get some insight into some of the characters as okay. we look forward to the release. Yeah, that's exciting, and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the event that's cancelled on the 20th, but is is that the day it's going to be on CBT, CBC? It's going to be actually on the 21st. On the we 21st. were going to do a red we were going to do a red carpet yeah. ceremony yeah. Uh, when if we were allowed to be in person, but because the restrictions, we had to cancel that. Yeah. Event. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching the show on the 21st. So that's. Uh... <laughs> Alrighty. So we just got to uh, Pearl and Serene just joined us. Uh, we're about to start, but uh, we'll wait for you. So while I, uh, we're going to start with a land acknowledgement, but while I do that, um, if you wanted to go to crowd.live and enter the code uh, VNI72, and maybe if someone could um, just repost that in the chat, because I don't, I don't, I'm not sure uh, new people can can see that, can scroll up and see that. Um, when you get thank you, Carrie. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm uh, beaming in from the lower Assiniboia watershed. I'm a settler on the swindled lands of Treaty One territory, the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, the Anihu, or Cree, the Oji Cree, Dene, and Dakota, and the birthplace of the Metis Nation. The colonial name for my city is Winnipeg. Uh, see a lot of Winnipeggers here, but uh, Sherry or Pearl, if you're from different lands, we'll give you space to. Tell us where you're from and acknowledge yours. Okay, welcome Winnipegers. That's that's cool. So um, I put up the um, list of uh, Black History Manitoba's uh, events on the screen. We just talked about that while you guys were joining, but I'm going to pop that in the chat in case you want to check it out. Oh, you're from Winnipeg. Cool. Okay. 
excellent. Uh, so you can check that out later. Um, we've got a great prize uh, tonight. Um, so somebody is going to win this, and uh, it's good to hear you're all from Winnipeg because I don't need to ship this anywhere. <laughs> So I'll be dropping this off at someone's house. So after the game, uh, if you win, don't uh, don't run away. You got to make sure I know where where to live. So somebody's gonna gonna get this book. Uh, it's a, it's actually a kids book, so you can read this uh, to your kids. And if you're you know, um, I might read this before I give it away. So definitely read it. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Carrie read it already. I, I, but I, I read it. I read the audio version, so I didn't have the pictures. So yeah. <laughs> It looks like a beautiful book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Carrie's going to have the extra edge. Because <laughs> I as, read the book. Exactly. As always. Now, the answers aren't in the book. They're online. but And you'll find them on Google. Oh, yeah. That's something else I should mention to the new people. So these are open book uh, trivia games. So it's not like a Trivial Pursuit where we roll the dice and you're asked a question and you, and you throw out a guess. We don't do it that way. Um, it's open book. So you'll get you'll be able to look it up and learn, uh, find the answer on the internet, and then click on the correct answer in, in the game. Okay, so uh, I find, uh, for me anyway, if I look things up myself, it sticks a little bit more. So it's... Uh... Alrighty, uh, one other thing. Speaking of prizes, if you'd like to support uh, non-trivial trivia, you can use this website and uh, drop us a loony or a toony or more. Or you can even subscribe and I chip in a loony every month. So that's uh that's how we'll that's how all these prizes uh are made possible by uh, people You're who are worthy what we're doing. Yeah, exactly. Uh did I miss anything? I don't think so. Okay, Jen, let her rip. Here we go. Viola Irene Desmond, née Davis, was a businesswoman and civil rights activist. What did she do for a living before becoming a beautician and mentor? A teacher, doctor, lawyer, or nurse? Jeez, I should have been Googling. This was not in the, in the picture book, by the way. <laughs> Oops, hey, wait, no, that's, that's I live. I don't, I don't want to <laughs> We don't want to do it that way, sorry. <laughs> Wrong tab, wrong tab. <laughs> Are you showing us your tab, your Cowper, your guess? Uh, no, I, I, I don't think I clicked anything. So I didn't click anything and I have an answer showing on my end. I think you might have hit um, one of the buttons there, Jen. Okay. <laughs> Show live answers results, I think. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh my gosh. Or was that correct? That's okay. I know what to do. I know what to do. <laughs> okay, here we go. I fixed it. <laughs> I fixed it and I'm sorry. <laughs> that was a practice question. <laughs> Good. So look it up and learn grief. after. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what? <clears throat> Okay. All the votes are in. We had seven correct answers. The correct answer was, as indicated by my mistake, teacher. Look, it's the practice round. Okay. Question two. After attending the Field Beauty Culture School in Montreal, where did Ms. Desmond continue her studies? Halifax and Atlantic City, New York and Boston, Atlantic City and Toronto, or Atlantic City and New York? Is my clicking too hard, too loud? <laughs> I've never okay. used this computer to play before, so. Where did Ms. Desmond study? And Google, tell me where, tell me the answer. No.
<laughs> okay, all the votes are in. The correct answer was D, Atlantic City and New York. When she finished, she came back to Halifax and started her own salon and then started a school as well. <laughs> so that all other black women who wanted to study uh, didn't have to travel as far as she did. And she graduated as many as 15 women annually from her school. That's amazing. Okay, question three. At the time Ms. Desmond was removed from the theater for sitting in a whites only section, there were no actual laws enforcing seg segregation. With what existing law was Ms. Desmond charged? Disturbing the peace, public intoxication, tax evasion, or breaking and entering? This question's answer is in the book. that's fast everybody's already answered the correct answer was tax evasion Whoop. oh what did i do there we go she was fined 26 dollars which would be the equivalent of 368 dollars and 29 cents today thank you and six of that went back to the theater if you can imagine Hmm. So how did they after come up with tax evasion? Because she wasn't actually breaking a law. I know. So they had to come up with something. It was the difference in um it was the ticket price. Oh, okay. So because she wasn't paying um price, they thought they were she wasn't paying entertainment tax. tax. Oh my goodness. It was an entertainment <laughs> tax. She offered the, the difference in tickets was one cent. She mm -hmm. offered to pay the one cent, but was denied, of course. Okay. So because they wouldn't take her money, she didn't pay the pet tax on that penny. So they, she had to go, oh my goodness. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Seems a good time. Ooh, five point difference. 17 mm -hmm. point difference between first and third. Mm -hmm. Look at this. I didn't, are... uh, yeah, I didn't get number two in quick enough. <laughs> okay. Question four. What was the name of the movie Ms. Desmond was going to see? The movie Sleep, The Dark Mirror, The Razor's Edge, or Great Expectations? going to see a movie to kill time while her car was being repaired.
That was hard to find. I found it. The Google kept All the right. votes are in. The correct answer was B, the dark mirror. Question five. Ms. Desmond was charged with attempting to defraud the provincial government of the difference in the price of the tickets. What was the price difference? It said $1, 20 cents, and 50 cents. And we've already had this conversation. I know, I know, I got that one quick. I was gonna say, this is like an extra lightning round. <laughs> I need to keep my mouth shut. All the votes are in. It was one cent. People are paying attention. All the votes are in already. <laughs> That's good. I did. I did find uh, conflicting information on what she was fined. Mm -hmm. uh, one place said twenty dollars. One said twenty six. Uh, but that definitely six dollars went back to the theater from what she was charged. Question six, who represented Ms. Desmond at her court appearance? The Crown Attorney, Roderick McKay, Elmo Langille, or no one? Hmm. Mm -hmm. I probably <laughs> wow that's not oh I forgot to turn on the cooking music I was so eager to find the answer <laughs> Okay, all the votes are in. She was not represented by anyone. She wasn't told she was entitled to representation. She wasn't offered it, nothing. Wow, so she just showed up at court and they were all <laughs> a bunch of lawyers telling her how it's gonna be with no, with no, one, no one there to help. Okay, after six questions, let's see where we're sitting. Come on, come on. Oh, I moved up. <laughs> I've got a ways to go though. <laughs> You're still out of the medals. Yeah. <laughs> What's the lightning round worth this time? Two hundred? Lots. Lots, okay, okay, that's good. <laughs> Don't be discouraged, the lightning round okay. can catch up. And change everything. The great, the great leveler. <laughs> Question seven. In February 2012, Canada Post issued a postage stamp featuring Ms. Desmond. What image is featured as the backdrop? The city of New Glasgow, the Roseland Theatre, Ms. Desmond's theatre ticket, or all of the above? Uh, I clicked on a Google ad to buy the stamp. No, and it didn't tell me anything. <laughs> She's after the peanut jar. <laughs> I just need to lock this down. Okay, all the votes are in. Except mine. Correct. Here, I'll pick one quick. <laughs> okay. Hey. I made a guess what? quick. No, I... Oh, I was counting. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, correct answer was D, all of the above. Hmm. Question eight. <clears throat> 
Thanks in large part to Ms. Desmond's determination, segregation eventually ended in Nova Scotia. In what year did this happen? 1948, 1952, 1954, or 1965? Whoops, wrong mute. There we go. And there's a picture of the stamp. <laughs> oh. I thought the different stamps when I Googled for the stamp. Really? I think, I think, yeah, I think it just didn't have the bottom part on it, like with the ticket in the theater. Okay. The other thing in the backdrop drop is the marquee, which has the name of the mirror, which is why I couldn't post the picture of the stem earlier. Hmm. So yeah, it's, it's open book. So look it up and learn and you get all the time you need, unless you're Michael. <laughs> or me, I never get to play. <laughs> I'm finding nothing. Yep. Oh, okay. I got to register to, re I got to log into this website to actually <laughs> okay, find another one. <laughs> I registered for nothing. Yeah. It, it wants to take me to a newspaper. I don't subscribe to. <laughs> of course. Of course it does. Here's why. <laughs> I was trying to find out if there was any like um any sort of evidence of her ticket or her fine from the movie theater so we could settle once and for all how much the fine was <laughs> but i can't find anything i couldn't find anything either well i'm gonna take a guess and hope it happened in the website that. Yep. I see all the votes are in. Yep. The correct answer was C, 1954. <laughs> oh. I couldn't find that online anywhere, but I, I did I kind of guessed that it would be after, <laughs> definitely after the thing in the movie theater. And I, I hoped it happened during a lifetime. So I picked 54. Okay, question nine. <clears throat> With the help of her church and the Nova Scotia Association for the Advancement of Colored People, Desmond hired a lawyer. What was their name? William Laura Mohall, William Pearly Oliver, Frederick William Bissett, or Carrie Best? Okay, all the votes are in. The correct answer is C, Frederick William Bissett. Uh, he, did, he never billed her and all of the money that was raised to support her defense uh, went to the NSAACP. Thanks, Jim. Question 10. Yep. 
Ms. Desmond's sister wrote a book about her published in 2010. What was it called? Journey to Justice, Sister to Courage, Controlled Damage, or Viola Desmond Won't Be Budged. I like the sound of the last one. Me too. <laughs> it is an actual work. There is an actual book called Viola Desmond Won't Be Budged. So it does, so if that helps with the question. Yeah. All four of these are actual yeah. things. This one's written by Elizabeth McLeod, so don't pick this one. <laughs> don't pick that one, not an option. figured out something and I can see everybody. We got all kinds of new tech this week. We're starting. Last week, uh, last time we did a Vince Fontaine uh, memorial thing and we played a video and then we had a moment of silence and Facebook autoplay <laughs> like decided to play uh, an interview with Connor Hellebrock talking about the hockey <laughs> game during the moment of the silence and we couldn't figure out how to turn it off. It was, uh, Technology at its finest. Yeah, so we've got new tech now, but it's um, learning new stuff. Okay, I see all the votes are in. The correct answer is B, Sister to Courage. Oh, I think I scored. Journey to Justice. Sorry. Journey to Justice is actually the National Film Board movie that was made. Okay. About Viola and other civil rights activists. I think I'm catching up. Because I, I want to know, don't you? I, I do, yeah. <laughs> okay, one question. There are two remaining questions, one of which is the last, the lightning round, but I'm going to show you the standings. <laughs> Yay. No, Look at this. I'm not catching up. I stayed the same. I'm still in fifth. <laughs> I moved up, no. which is shocking. <laughs> still pretty dang close. Okay. Uh, oh. Struggling with my mouse here. Okay, question 11. On April 14th, 2010, Ms. Desmond was issued a posthumous pardon. By whom was it issued? Daryl Dexter, Mayan Francis, Graham Reynolds, or Queen Elizabeth II? Hmm. Oops. I made a guess, but I'm going to keep researching. Maybe I can find out for real. I'm trying to catch up, right? So you got to take a chance. But I'm, but I'm still here to learn. So. Okay, all the votes are in. The correct answer was Mayanne Francis. She was the oh. Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia. <laughs> and it was on Daryl Dexter's recommendation. Okay. 
Okay, everyone. Final question, the lightning round. Chance to redeem yourselves if you're not in metal position. Ready? Ready. Here we go, three, two, one. Viola was the first black person and non-royal royal to feature on which Canadian currency? $10 bill, the loony, the $20 bill, or the toomey? Oh. You changed the color. <laughs> it's always been green for the lightning round. <laughs> I didn't even read it. I just clicked green. Oh my I was not aware that there <laughs> that you had also, that hidden, that hidden I, code. I did not know there was a color scheme. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't either. It was released in March of 2018, and on the other side of it, the Bank of Canada features the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. The correct answer was a $10 bill, Michael. <laughs> okay. Carrie. Oh my gosh. Wow. 41 points. 41 points. Wow. Crazy. Exciting. Yes. All righty. Um, so there's a button that um, Jen can push. Uh, final stop quiz and finalize, and then it'll show you all the wrong answers on your phone so you can um like so do you need help finding that uh? no i okay. just did it yeah cool okay all righty so now it's the after party <laughs> welcome to the after party <laughs> thanks uh does anyone want to say anything they want on youtube before i stop the recording thank you for coming Yes, I found an article. I don't know if anyone else saw this in their searching that uh, Nova Scotia symbolically repaid the $26 fine. Yes, oh, really? which was which was in today's dollars worth 300 and something and but they bumped it up to 1000. Okay. Yes, I will put the link in the chat because I thought that was very And then that was put into a scholarship, I believe. Ooh. Interesting. Can I share something while we're still recording? Yes. Okay, so um, someone we know, uh, Nadia Thompson, was uh, recognized and put in this book, of 100 uh, Accomplished Black Canadian Women. Uh, hey. for others who don't know, uh, she's also with uh, Black History Manitoba, but I'm just gonna read a little, a little bit from her little bio. Sorry, I've got the, the camera backwards. I always hold things backwards. <laughs> I found out you can flip the camera and it doesn't get the words backwards, kind of like you can read ambulance in your rear view mirror. So anyway, um, at the end of the little blurb about her, um, they ask her uh, some questions and answers. So they asked uh, Nadia, what are her greatest accomplishments? And one of the things she mentioned, um, I was completely shocked and honored to ask to sorry, to be asked to make a speech at the unveiling of the new $10 banknote featuring, featuring Leola Desmond and the Canadian Museum for Human Rights on it. So that kind of ties into tonight. And there's all kinds of, yeah, I, I knew I knew a little bit about Nadia, but she does other kinds of stuff uh, in addition to Black History Manitoba. So get, get a copy or borrow mine. So she is actually playing tonight, but I don't think that she logged into the Zoom. Yep. So you'll see that there was, I think there was oh. eight of us on the Zoom, but there was 12 of us actually playing. So oh, okay. I think a few people um, had just gone into the, the crowd.live. So, so okay. I will let her know. Um, yep. She's messaging me. And she's, so I let her know that you guys uh, had talked about this. So she's now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this I'm is available. Keep that in mind. 
I'm going to need to keep that in mind going forward because I'm trying, I'm matching the Zoom participants oh. with the oh. number of answers. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I was uh, once or twice I saw answers come in as I was saying, okay, everybody's answered. Ah, okay. So hmm. my apologies. Yeah. Because <laughs> she wrote that she couldn't get yeah. in to the Zoom. So she said that she was Purple Star. <laughs> so she was in the list of people playing. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So speaking of boring, like I said, you guys can borrow this when I'm done, but I'll need a while because uh, I've got a lot of books on the go. Um, I saw on Black History Manitoba's Facebook that they've got a library as well. How, how, to, how do you, we access that or yes. do you have to find, be a member or? So you'll actually see that behind me on my table with my plants, I've got some of the books that we were, that we have in our library. Basically what we do is we, we source them throughout the year and then we have them available so that um, during February, oftentimes we'll have people that are doing reads at different schools, but they don't necessarily um, have the funds or resources to purchase a book. So we will lend them out during Black History Month or, or anytime really, for, so that individuals can, can read them and bring them back. We don't have an official way to do it, but people usually just send us an email and let us know if there's a title that they can't find. Because we'll usually, we've got some connections with different bookstores and then we'll, we'll get them in stock. And then we allow people to, to borrow them, read them, do them for reads online and, and they bring them back to us. So yeah, so if anybody wants to do that, I'd, it's because Black History Month and I Love to Read Month fall in the same month, we have a lot of requests for reading material. So we we use that opportunity to, to allow individuals to borrow them. So. Okay. So <laughs> we can connect through your website if we don't know you already. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You Talk can send us a message through the website or yeah. you know if you if you have our personal information, then yeah. feel free to connect with us. Absolutely. You can email yeah. us at bhm Winnipeg at gmail.com. Cool. Well, I'd like to borrow the Ayufa Cooper book, but I'll wait till oh, for sure. I'll wait till Black History Month's over because might, someone else might want it. But uh, for sure, and I probably don't have time. <laughs> and it is a longer read. Yeah, yeah, some it of is okay. Yeah, we gave that one away last year, and I kind of oh yes, I, yes, I could have yes, read it uh, before. That. That's uh, that's uh, we actually asked Ayufa to come come join us as a guest, but uh, we didn't. Get oh, okay, it. for sure. Yes, um, I believe Val has that book in stock at her okay. store, and that's where we got ours. Our okay. Book. That's where we got ours too. There you go. Yes. Yeah. But I gave it. We love to big up our our local bookstores. Yeah. Um, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Val runs uh, two cine books. That's when it takes a yeah. uh, black owned bookstore. I'll pop that in the chat too. So I'm not going to try to spell it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I think it's T O S O M E. Yeah. T U S O M E. I got it in the chat, Michael. Way oh. <laughs> to go, Carrie. <laughs> You typed faster than I did. <laughs> I want to erase mine. <laughs> oh. I did look for um, Sister to Courage. Well, I didn't find it on too so many books, but I also didn't call her. Um, so she may be able to get it. Right. Awesome. Alrighty. So I'm going to stop.